Hello everyone, this is Rex Red. I am back with another fun tutorial. We are in 4K today, 4K, 4K. I am very pleased to announce that we are back in the 4K world, world, world. Let's see, we lift our finger here and see how long it takes. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Maybe I need to click live. Okay, we are live. Okay. Well, we're going to see if, how this works. Okay. So, uh,. We might, I, I might end up with just too much, too much lag uh, between me and when people leave a message. We'll see, because uh, I was really liking the way that the 1440 looked, but we have a really nice setup now here with a, uh, with the 4K and I think it looks pretty good. So let's see, our settings are, we're running at, uh, at do, 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 output. It's 8,000 kilobits per second at 4K. So it's pretty good right now. So I'm not sure what's going to be up. We'll see how long it takes for me to respond to people. And I may bump it down to 1440, but we'll see. Okay, so I am in Daz Studio right now. Let me know if you actually see a difference. We have a little perp a little blue thing around our cursor too, because I figured with the added size that we're that we're broadcasting in that it might be a little better to to get something so you can kind of see where my mouse is I I click a lot um, in the in this program and so I thought it might be easier I can switch it to yellow if I need to but let's see if the blue kind of shows up so all right we have a couple of things we're going we have this uh, new elephant so we got this figure. We're going to put the elephant in the scene. The elephant is in the room, okay? And we're going to also put our little snuggly bear, snuggles. Uh, fur long. We want the long fur, of course. Snuggles is going to be furry. I wonder if we got some... Uh, Oh my gosh, Snuggles is huge. We have the Toon Elephant. How did we end up? Okay, there's Snuggles. Snuggles is so much bigger. So we're going to have to resize him. Parameters, Snuggles. And is this just the fur? Snuggles fur? I don't see any eyes here. It is. It's just the fur. Okay, let's see. Uh, let's. Oh, that's hair. Shaping materials. All files. Where are you, Snuggles? Materials. Hair. And eyes shape wow uh snuggles the toon bear maybe i have to buy had to buy let's go here there's more than meets the eye here let's see what we've got daz Snuggles. Snuggles. 
50% off uh, fur for Snuggles. And we click on this. There's Snuggles. Okay. So we got to buy the Toon Bear, I think. And then we get... So if we go here back to Snuggles, we click on this. It's going to say Snuggles the Toon re Required Product. I looked up Snuggles, and I was not certain that... That, uh, okay, so we got to buy him. We go here to 648. Apply to cart. And I'm going to end up paying five bucks, I guess. 531 for Snuggles. All right, welcome, Ruben. Welcome, welcome. Let me know now. I am... A stream bitrate is lower than recommended bitrate. <laughs> That's weird. Uh, we recommend just a moment. <laughs> That's kind of odd. Open the widget. We recommend a bitrate of 23,500. Um... I don't think I need to raise the bit rate. Okay, 26. Uh, let's see. Let's go here. 4K. Let's see what this looks like. Yeah, you know, I don't think I need to raise the bit rate here. And so for now, I think we're going to stay, stick with... Uh, the bit rate that we got, okay, because it's looking okay from with me. And thank you for the likes, and welcome, welcome, Ruben, welcome. Okay, so I have to turn off my, okay, this is Game PC, is this the one? Yeah, I got to turn that off so I can make uh, a purchase here. And I'm going to proceed to billing. And then we have to... We're going to purchase Snuggles the Toon Bear. And I got my camera here open. I have to turn this off too. All kinds of little uh, top-down camera. So we don't type in our PIN numbers here. Okay. And we go here over to back to here. Okay. Over here. Okay. And we click birth place order. And we got Snuggles the bear. Yes, we do. And we got the elephant. They're going to be having a little tea party. Okay. So, uh. This is the thing I hear. It's uh, really fun having a little tea party. Okay, so now we can turn this back on, the top-down camera and our PC camera. And we come back. I am working to improve my... Uh, my... Uh, stream and so that is the thing it's like see how uh, um, now I'm watching this I'm watching my just to see how much latency okay yeah so I would say there's probably about 12 seconds so if I see you if I see you post something in the chat it could take up to 12 seconds before you hear my reply, okay? So, because I'm a little bit, um, I don't know how to, how to word it. Uh, in time, your YouTube is taking about 12 seconds to show you what I'm, what we're doing here. Okay, so now I'm going to open up the install manager. We have a little blue dot today. See how all kinds of fun things that I'm trying to do to make our stream look really cool. 
really, really, really cool. So we got to take and pose. They're going to be sitting on the ground and there's going to be a little teeny table with some teapots and stuff. And we're going to have them in this really fantastical world. So uh, it should be fun. We'll see how, how, how this works out. So, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that there's not too much latency. And if there is, then I will have to, if there's too much latency, I will have to do something. I don't know what. Uh, well, what I will do is, well, that was good to turn that off. Okay, we're back. If there's too much latency, I might switch down to 1440, but I would really like these Daz videos for Daz to look cl as clear and sharp as possible. You can watch it on your on your 50-inch 4K TVs, and, and it's going to look really nice. And it's live. So all of those awesome kind of things. You can kick back, watch this on your TV. So, all right. So we're open. We've opened up our, and everything keeps, what's wrong with that? Okay, I've lost that. Let's go back to HDMI 2. Okay. Everything's showing up in my up here. Um, okay, start this. It's all just showing. I've been switching monitors around. I'm going to have possibly a new camera. I'm not sure exactly if I'm going to use the new camera. Now my hair looks like uh, it's weird. Okay. Um, I just got back from the mall, so uh, I had to take back a cord. So I have to wait until the install manager counts out 10,000 items, and then we'll be able to install Snuggles, the Toon Bear, and we'll see how this all works. I wonder if they're going to give uh, the elephant hair as well. He's got some hair on his head, but I'm wondering if he's going to get uh, hair. We could uh, go out of here, and while we're waiting on Snuggles, we could take the Toon Bear elephant, and we go to parameters, and what do we do with the, the hip here? Uh, this hip bend. There's one and two bend. Okay. And we can go side to side, make his legs go out a little bit so they can fit at the table. Okay. And how can you tell if the elephant's been in the refrigerator? Because their fingerprints are in the butter. Okay. So let's see. Now uh, we're still waiting for the install manager to come in here. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know why I remembered that joke for like 30 years. So, uh, yeah, my brain. Yes. So we, I have some fun stuff going on here with my channels. We're, uh, we are really stepping things up. Okay, I guess this might, uh, we might go with the parameters and go front back. Let's see. Bend. And front back. This one go here front back like, like this. No, that's the shoulder. We want this one. Front back. And bend. Okay. 
and we uh, can bend the fingers, bend the hands a little bit, out, okay, and the fingers here, bend, yeah, okay, and he's going to be sitting, all right, now we, we need to turn on the floor so we can see where the floor is. And then, and Snug, uh, this is a uh, Toon Elephant. He's got a, we got to put, all right, I'm going to find, okay, now let's see. I think we should, be, there's Snuggles the Toon Bear. We're going to bring this down. We're going to install Snuggles. And now we should be able to put Snuggles in the scene too. Snuggly Wuffly and our... Toon Elephant, the Snuggles we're going to call Marlo, all right, so uh, that's his name. So we go Default, and then we go to Figures again, and it's got to reread this, and I think we'll go to Environments for now. I'm still getting used to this blue dot. I hope the blue dot kind of helps you follow where my mouse is. I could make it yellow, but I kind of like the blue for now. Let me know if you want it to stand out more. All right, we're looking for a particular scene, and I'm going to put that scene in the, in the scene. When I find it, I've got to look through, and I will find it. I think it's way down here. Um... We need something fantastical, and we'll see it here in a minute. And I absolutely love this scene. I don't know how they made it, but it's just an amazing scene. I've used it once before in a, and I rarely ever use a scene twice. So that should tell you how much I like this scene. Unless I see something I might like better, but I don't think so. Uh, these little balloons are kind of interesting. It'd be nice to have some balloons in the scene, but we, we shall see. My corner of the forest. Oh, look at this. We've got an uh, African environment. But I don't know that Marlo would like it there too much. Uh, it could be too hot for him. I think they're going to like this scene if I can find it. And my eyes are pretty good at picking this stuff out. Oh, look at this. We have the, uh, well, are you going to let me read this or just jump? A, uh, it's called Lilac Chill Out. And look at this. We've got, uh, this is kind of nice, but. This is really nice, this lilac chill out. And they could sit on the ground and we could put the table. That could be nice. Nicer maybe than what I was thinking of. Let's put it in the scene. And yeah. Let me know if you're having trouble if like there's a spinning circle and and if you have if you have trouble with the stream let me know if the stream looks like crap okay i need to know all of these things okay so they're not going to use the chairs but i might use the table and though we don't need the flowers well maybe we'll leave the flowers on the table this is why i wanted to put this these in because then we can tell where the ground is, where the toon elephant's going to sit. Parameters, X translate. Yeah, this is our scene here. And um, Y rotate a little bit. Y translate. And you got to sit on the ground. We're going to put the... Uh, I'm still getting over a cold. Y translate. We're going to have the table go into the ground a little bit, like it's a little table. And we're going to have him come ahead a little. Oop, the table. We're going to have the table here. Have our toon elephant. 
come ahead a little bit. Tune, elephant. All right, X, translate. Y, translate. Okay. X, translate. Y, rotate. And Z, translate. Okay. So there, I think I'd like the arm to bend. So we bring it down like front back like this and bend. We might have to twist it a little bit. No, there we go. All right, so it doesn't look, and this, this arm needs to look more natural too. So we'll bring it down if we can. Come on. Okay, we'll bring it back like this. And then we'll bend it up a little bit like this. Yeah. Like he's about ready to grab the tea on the table. Okay. There we go. And now we've got to bring in Marlo. Save this as uh, uh, call it friends. 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 Okay. And we're going to have to make. Uh, Make Marlowe a little smaller. Okay. I, I'm hoping that this looks okay. Maybe I'll bump up. Let's see. What happens when I come back here? HDMI 1. Okay. Yeah, it came back. That's, we were lu that's a lucky break, I think. I do think. I think, I think, a very lucky break. Okay, so what am I doing? This is my all live channel, all right? This is good. Now what I'm trying to do, what did I come back here to do? Bring this, bring maybe the, uh, it says that I need to bring up my quality here the video bit rate let's go up to we'll go up to to 10 10,000 that's the highest i want to go i don't want to go any more than that so uh this is all being Handled by my graphics card. Okay, so now we come back here and it's still giving me the warning. I don't think they've updated. Okay, so we're looking for now for a figure and it's going to be a Snuggles the Bear. Let's S and Snuggles. There he is, the Toon Bear. We're going to put him in the scene. All right. Why is he not so big? All right, let's bring him over. And let's select him. Snuggles the bear. Parameters. X translate. Z translate. He is bigger. Y rotate. And... Uh, Okay, can we move his leg like up the way we want to bend? And this part maybe bend. And we're going to bend his feet up and down a little bit. Then we do this side here. Bend up. And this part up. Bend. And bend. And I 
think we gotta go a little bit side to side, maybe. I don't I don't know. Alright, let's bring Snuggles back. Let's just bring his back. Now let's go to Snuggles and let's move him down so he's sitting on the ground. Why translate? Okay. And we gonna we're gonna scale him down a little bit. So he's not too big. Too small. And then we'll move him in a little bit. And we're going to rotate him a bit. That. And put his arms down now. That's this would be this bend front back and bend and bend this up and then we do the same okay how does that look I guess that's okay now we gotta bring this one down front back a little bit bend And then we'll bring this hand up a little bit, like this. Bend. There we go. We are in 4K, people. Let's move this out a little bit. Bend. See, we got to bend these a little bit, just a little like this, and then go to the next one down, bend them a little bit like that, okay, let's twist this. Twist, where's twist? Okay, and I think we got something going on here, Ben, that's, we got to take Snuggles, we got to rotate him a little bit more, like that, and then we'll bring him in a little more, like this, bring this arm down. Okay, bring this over. Okay, let's let's see what this looks like. Okay, we gotta frame our camera here a little bit. We have our flowers sitting up on the Okay, are they all one thing or no? Vase and flowers, yeah, they are. I think we can move them all down. Y translate and X translate, Z translate, Y translate. Okay, I don't know that we want flowers here. Maybe I was thinking about some teacups and stuff. Um. Let's see. Bend. Okay, let's see what this looks like in Save This in iRay. Control Zero. Let's see. Well, yeah. All right, now um, I don't think I want the flowers. I think I want teacups and stuff. So we click on the flowers. 
We'll just hide them for now. Plants, okay, we'll hide that. And it didn't hide that for some reason. Let's delete it then, okay? We'll mess with the teapot and the teacups, cups and saucers in a minute. Okay, let's uh, let's do something with our HDRI. Uh, I'm going to put a plane in the background because I want a really vibrant sky. I don't want it kind of washed out. So we go with this plane. And then we take our plane. Art! Oh, wow, that's odd. Uh, I don't know. Right now, it's everything's kind of new with the stream. Uh, it's all kind of new. So when when you post something in the stream, you have to wait about like 10 seconds before you will hear my reply. Okay, so that's what's going on is right now we have a, uh, and because I am now broadcasting in, um, let's see, count this, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13 about 13 seconds yes we are focused now today today we are uh yeah daz it, this is this is monumental we are in 4k so make sure that you go into the youtube that the little gear down in the bottom and click on the uh, uh, on the 4K. If your monitor can handle 4K, if not, if you've got a 4K TV, put the YouTube app on your TV, and you can watch. Sit back and watch this in glorious 4K now. Okay. So let's see what we've got. We have a plane in the scene now. And we're going to rotate this plane like this. Okay, and that is going to be at 90, I think, 90. And we're going to rotate it like this. And I don't know that that has to be at any particular, just enough so that Okay, why, we don't need to rotate the Y. Y would be zero, right? Yeah, Y can be zero. And so we're going to Z. Uh, X translate. Welcome, Angus. Welcome, 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 dear friend. Welcome. Welcome to you all. It is so nice to have you here. Very, very, very nice. So we're going to put a plane in the background. Z. This is going to go way back. We got to go Z and X. I have everything off kilter here. As you can see, my it should be placed at the front. I suppose I should fix all of this, okay? So we're going to fix all this. Control, alternate, minus, and we're going to put the uh, elephant and uh, all of these together into a group. So you click the group icon, and we're going to just call this scene all. And this is how we do it. So now I'm going to go and turn it to the front. And then I'm going to take this scene all and I'm going to rotate it around like this. And then we're going to pull the scene over. 
like this, X translate. And now we have our scene. Everything's facing the front. I just don't like to fight with like fractions of things. Yes, so we have five people here today. It is always very nice to have you here. So we're going to turn this up just a little bit like this. And we're going to zoom in a little bit on our figures. And here we go. And now we are facing the front. And everything should rotate now properly. We're going to bring his foot up, bend that up a little bit more. Okay, and then, and his is his tail going into the ground. All right, so now we can take our plane. Where is our plane? Where is the plane? X translate the plane. Where is the plane? Oh, it's over there. So now we can rotate it like this and just set it back to zero. No, it would be 50. Sorta, kinda, maybe. Y translate, zero. Uh, y, zero. And X translate. Y is our plane translated. Oh, Z rotate, zero. And rotate X, zero. All right, now let's see what happens when we do this. This should be 90, go at 90. Okay, and Z translate should push it back. Okay, we bring it back, back, back. Then we scale it. And then we can scale it on the X. And that should give us a really save this. Now everything is, now I'm going to push this back a little further. Just so it's completely out of, and then we'll scale it a little more. It's completely away from our scene. All right. Now we can put... Now the thing is, is to pick an environment that our figures look good in. And we would do that through the environment options, parameters. And let's, let's just go down through. We have uh, envir environment options. Let's do this through the smart content way, render settings. And... Let's go down through here. We have this right here. Re Redux. Re I don't know how to pronounce that word. Redux. Let's see. Okay. Every once in a while, <laughs> certain words just totally... All right. Echo, how do you pronounce R-E-D-U-X? Okay. Redux. Echo, define Redux. Redux is a JavaScript library that is used to make... Echo, stop. Echo, define R-E-D-U-X. Redux is an adjective that signifies something that has been brought back or revived from its previous state. Echo, stop. Okay, so it's the new version of something of these redone okay so let's see what this scene looks like with this environment we go to parameters we still are going to have a blank screen here okay we didn't put the hair on our bear the bear hair okay i'm trying to do too many things at once let's i'm not sure that i like this 
Let's try maybe a different one. Why does this only have like one or two different? Okay, it's not happy enough. So I'm looking for something blue and bright, but and we got to put some uh, hair on the bear. Okay. Why do these all... S oh, they these may have been updated. They, they may have had a, uh, an update done to them. We're just looking for something that's going to look good in here. I can move, rotate the light around a little bit better, but um, this one, economy. All right, these aren't doing it for me. Right now, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Let's see what we've got. I hope you all are not having any issues with the stream today. I hope you're able to chat, and I hope uh, I hope you're a that it's not spinning around. I hope it's not too much. It, it should allow you a lower version like if your computer can't handle 4k it should allow you to go to to standard def for something like that so uh just let me know if you're having any problems awesome 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 very nice there are no issues okay for uh art and so i am hoping that is going to be the case for everyone Okay, so I'm not, that one's not doing it either for me. And let's see, what else have we got? What else is here? We're gonna, I don't, I think I want something sunny and bright. You know, I don't, okay, this is, this is where we're gonna get it. All right, now this is a little bit too strong, but I can just lower it down a little bit. This is going to give me the color that I want. Um, I don't know if you all are aware of these. There's uh, skies of radiance, and these skies are like the best HDRIs you can buy, uh, at least in my opinion, in the Daz store. Okay, and there's three different sets of them. Okay, so we just go into our environment parameters and we just bring this down to like one maybe. And, and then we can rotate it around a little bit. And 0.5. And let's go back to 2 here with our... And let's go with a little bit of rosiness to this. Pink. No, let's go with bluish pink we can just kind of experiment a little bit here with some tints maybe a yellow a green I think it's going to be greenish yellow when you see those tints that's what these are they they Basically, you can just come in and set the tint the way you want it to be. Now, that looks nice and warm, but it's probably just a little too strong. There we go. That warmed it up a little bit, just in the right kind of warmth. Now, what we're going to, we're going to put a beautiful sky in behind them. 
But what I want to do now is fix the bear, okay, because he's supposed to have fur. So let's go into our Snuggles the Bear. And now this is, they're called Skies of Radiance. Um, we'll go here and look. And there's three of them, the Skies of Radiance, and you can get them in a bundle. I highly recommend these, this set, okay? They, I, you know, I don't know that, I, I, I'm not sure who made them. The, it, it says in the Daz store who made them. Um, all I can say is, and I don't, and I don't believe they're actual photographs of real skies. I don't know. Maybe they were made in Bryce or something like that. I don't know, but they're just they. It, um, when they work in your scene, they really work. Okay, so. Uh, let's go here to uh, the dad's store, see if they're on sale. Skies of Radiance. Okay, and here's, okay, they, they're they on sale right now, okay? They're 83% off right now, okay? Buy them, okay? These are the best HDRIs ever. Okay, usually, you know, it's like I'll try other ones, but I seem to always at least give these ones a try. And they are made by uh, Dimension Theory. And I've gone to Dimension Theory and bought every sky that they make. But there's something really, 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 really special about these. And one of, one of the skies in particular is extremely beautiful. But um, the thing about it is uh, they made a mistake with it. Um, and uh, I think it, it, got, um, it got corrupted somehow. But it's like the most beautiful sky of them all. But it got corrupted because uh, it's there's a little bit of banding in the color, and the other ones don't really have that problem, and it's as if uh, it just didn't get rendered right, uh, maybe at the right bit or something. So, but these are by far the night ones, the daytimes. There's just so there's something amazingly detailed about these skies that just really work the moons in them are a little bit just you you kind of have to play with them and they're a little bit on the bright side they're a little bit sometimes you have to tone them down a little bit in the environment settings but these three skies set sets you will find that they are just amazing to work with and i'm going to pr try putting one of them on our plane in the background and you'll see what i mean about massive massive detail okay so we're going to go here and mess we're going to work work with snuggles uh first and give him some fur i could just take the shine off of him but i'd rather have just give him some fur there's some new fur that we have and we go to up here to Snuggles, and we have to select figures. Uh, I think we have to go here to maybe materials and see and select filter by context and see if his, yep, it does. Fig, uh, it would be materials. Here we go. And we go to hair. Uh, we have long and short. Let's go with the short so it doesn't look too out of place with our other ba with the elephant that doesn't have too much hair. So let's see what this hair looks like on Snuggles. Yeah. There's our little Snuggles. Now, I think I'm going to go and take some of the shine off of Snuggles. It's coming right through the hair. Uh, so we're going to go to, how do we fix that? We now have to go to our skin, right? So it would be in surfaces on Snuggles. Okay, so we have the fur and we have two different things. 
So the bear claws pupil. Okay, which one says pupil iris? Okay, eye, inner ear, inner ear, mouth, nose, teeth. So this would be the skin. Okay, so the glossy color. So, and is this, this is uh, eye ray. Okay, so what we would do is just take uh, the glossiness maybe down. I would think either that. That's a little better. I think there's a little bit of glossiness on the fur too. So uh, what if we take and bring up the, where is it? It would be the roughness. Refraction weight. I think this is on the fur, so we're going to take some of the glossiness down on the fur. Glossy roughness is that we have a roughness for the fur. Okay, that's a little better. And we'll do a little more because I'm, I'm still getting some some kind something coming through. It might be coming through the skin. All right. Glossy reflectivity. If it keeps coming, then we're going to go back to snuggles. The bare part. And glossy inputs. What happens when we turn that off? It's still not gone. Glossiness. All right, let's go with uh, make this glossy black. And the glossy color to black. How about if we do, that's for the bare part. Now the fur, glossy color black. What is going on here? Glossy layered weight. We've got something that I don't, okay, uh, that I don't understand here. Glossy roughness. Bring it all the way up. It might only be, it might not be doing that on all of them. Yeah, it is. It appears it is, so it did. Uh, glossy inputs off. What is up here? Okay, let's put a camera in the scene. Create new camera. And I will lock the camera. Let's see what we have here. Most used, lock this. All right. And then, see this, uh, what's going on here with the fur? <laughs> Okay, uh, so we now we can go. We're in still in pre pre perspective view, so we're going to zoom in now on the fur and see what's what's going on here. Is that what's coming through the fur, or is it the fur itself? It's something on the fur. Okay, so it's something that I'm missing. Uh, fur. Glossy color, scatter only. Translucency weight, that would change the color, but not... Oh, this is it, top coat. Black. Gone. All right. I, I suppose it's a nice effect, but I j just don't... I think it's a little bit distracting. Okay. So there's a top coat that fixed that. All right. So now let's see what they look like from our camera. Yeah. So we got to give them some tea, some tea on the table. But uh, let's uh, w work on a few other things. Let's let's put a, a the, the sky background. Now I'm going to show you. 
how really nice those sc radiant skies are. So we're going to take this plane and we're going to go here to our surfaces and see if I can find the, the base color, browse. And we're going to go to HDRI all. And we're going to look up radiance. Radiance. Oh, come on. All right, well, I know how to find them. They're way down here, about down in here. Here they are. No, that's not them, but they're down in here. There would be SK. Let's try skies. Clear skies. All right, this isn't working. I just have to find them. There's only 5,000 files here. So, but I usually can find them. Okay, this is it. These are them. I can just tell. That. So there's called DT Sol. Dimension Theory, D-T-S-O-L. Well, why aren't they showing up now? D. All right, here they go. Okay, now something has taken the, they've, I see this isn't working, so, because it took it out of the interleaved look. So I just have to go down to the D, C, D, T, all right. See, they're interleaved between my JPEG and my HDR, DT. Here they are. And so we're going to go with the D Sunny. Here we go. This one, this one right here. Okay, so we put that on our plane. There we go. And uh, so then we, we want to turn this into an HDRI. So we put this on our emission color. DT, DT Sol, and we're going to put this also on our, we're going to turn this to white. Now this is an HDRI, and we're going to also put it on our luminance. What's the difference? Oh, that's the same sky that we have for our environment. Okay. So now we got to find, okay, save this. And what I'm thinking is the sky looks a little bit smushed because it's used, supposed to be put on a, on a sphere. And so what I'm going to do is just stretch it up a little bit, our plane. So we go to parameters, nine, and let's, this is what I love about using a plane is you can see it in texture shaded mode. Okay, and we're going to scale this up. Okay, we're going to go Z. There we go. Let's see what this looks like. I don't know that I want the sun in the scene anyway. Then I can kind of move the light around a little bit. 
Okay, that's nice. Now let's go to our environment and move this around a little bit. Let's reorient the dome. Okay, I think I like this. I think our uh, sky, uh, it's too bright. And I think it's too yellow. There we go. Oh, someone in or Oregon. Hello. Hello. Hello, this is Margaret with Economic and Cost and Alternative Perspectives. How are you today? Oh. Uh, I don't need a, another loan. Um, okay, not today, but thank you, Margaret. Um, Oregon. Yes, I got a call from Oregon for loan impact, uh, uh, economic disaster loan impact. Uh, and I'm, I'm trying to quit on the loan things because uh, now I'm thinking... This is okay. This is Son Sansa's guns. <laughs> I'm not sure what that is. Sansa's guns. I'm not sure what that is. But that is very cool. It's all cool. <laughs> Now, uh, I think this looks good. I kind of like the shadows going on here. Uh, so we need to find a tea, some tea, tea stuff. Now, again, I'll tell my joke again about uh, how you can tell the elephant's been in the refrigerator. Because their fingerprints are in the butter. So um, why can't an elephant ride a bell? I mean, ride. why can't an elephant ride a bike? Because their fingers are too fat to ring the bell. So, yeah, those are my jokes, my elephant jokes. Now, let's see. Okay, now we are going to... Um, we're going to find some teapot, tea stuff. So, we're going to go to Files... Tea. I think teapot is one word. I think I think it is. I do, I do. Oh, a nice little Okay, this little teapot. This looks kind of like your traditional teapot. <laughs> Thank you, Art. I'm glad you like my teapot jo my elephant jokes. I can't even can't even think anymore today. All right, let's see what we got. Let's put the teapot pot down on the... Okay, we bring it in like here. Bring it up. There we go. And some little tea teacups. I think... I think teacups is one word too. <laughs> oh, there we go. Some where where which one? We want the cups and the saucers. Oh, but these go with it. These are nice little props. Oh, the cup and the saucer. Teacup saucer group. Okay, we want them both. Oh, they're so dainty and little tiny little teacups and saucers and so very nice. Now I, I have to zoom in on this so we can see what we're doing. All right, let's bring this up and see if there's a saucer in, involved. Yes. Okay. And there's that. Edit. Duplicate. And we put this over here. 
like this and we spin that around there we go back to our camera view oh yes there it is now I think our teapot might be a little bit too sunk into the table Okay, back to our camera view. Oh, they look like they're having a fun time. Yes, friends. Friends don't let friends drink tea alone. So let's see. Um... I think that's looking pretty good. Now, I'm wondering if the light is... I'm not feeling this light, right? The, 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 I'm not feeling the HDRI. I think it's too powerful. It's too strong. Let's see what happens when we bring it down, like, to one... And now you can see my HDRI in the background. Now when I turn my plane off, see that goes away. So our HDRI is put in the background. You see that rim light? That's our A. Okay, that's what's making the flowers all. So we have to take and take our surface here and bring our luminance down to like 50 and see what happens. Okay, now we're getting a little bit. Let's go up to 100. We want a little of that rim light, but then we can take our environment light. I'm starting to feel this a little more now. Um, 1.5. And now I'm going to uh, show you a little trick. We're going to hide the, our plane for a moment. Now you can see our background. If we go into filament, filament mode, do you see uh, how the plane in the background um, how it, when you use the HDRI, the sky is, isn't as detailed. It's not, it's kind of washed out and it's just blah. But when you take that same HDRI and put it on a plane, you get this massively detailed because it's not stretching like a, you know, 4K or, or 8K image around the entire scene. It's, it's all condensed onto a plane and then you're able to get more detail out of your sky that's almost always i put a plane behind my scene so that i can use these hdris because what will happen is i'll render the scene and i'll render it like by ten thousand by ten thousand something like that or thirteen thousand by thirteen 13,500 by 13,500. That's about the largest I ever render anything, but that seems to be my number because it's big enough to fit on a duvet, on a king-size duvet, without, without having to uh, stretch it. So I will use 13,500 13, by 13,500, and you have to shut off the limits in your render so that you can go above 10,000 but I will render it at 13,500 by 13,500 and when you render it that large and you use like an 8k sky everything in your scene is like incredibly detailed and even down to the grass and everything but your sky is all kind of like blotchy and and 
uh, digitized. And so uh, that's why I always take like an 8K or 4 or 8K plane uh, image, put it on a plane, turn that plane into a uh, an emissive and use that as my backdrop. So now we're, we've got this here and what you can see now is when I in in this we could go into if I bring in create let's see tools it would be edit no create we can add our filament draw options and then when we go into the parameters of filament draw I think which one is it is it the ISO I think or is it the uh I think it's the ISO if we bring it down. Yeah, well, now we can see a little bit more detail in our sky. And so this is where I will move my HDRI because I can then see like the height of the sun and things like that that I can't see because you can't move it in, in, in iRay. You can try, <laughs> but it's going to be too too jerky trying to move it and so we go to the environment options now wait till they load and now I can rotate with these like Z X and Z and I can bring this is my HDRI here and watch what it's doing to my scene here I can rotate it in all kinds of directions and see what I like for the light. Why? Watch the scenes. Watch the, the figures in the scene and see what happens to them. Watch how it illuminates the scene. Let's try that. And then we can turn our plane back on. There we go. See, I'm not I'm not feeling this this HDRI, so what I'm going to do is just pick another one. So this is our environment map. And this is only loading uh the environment. It's just let's just go to our HDRI folder. And we'll go to my, my, the, what I do is I do a, I go to my dad's content, uh, my, my dad's library folder, and I do a search for HDR, star.hdr, HDR, and star.exr, and I copy every one of the EXRs and every one of the, uh, HDRs and I put them into this folder and then I use Photoshop to create these little teeny thumbnails because if and I do not put a uh, there's there are like one of them's called sage and everything it's where you where it will create the thumbnail for you of your HDR do not install any kind of HDR thumbnail preview maker kind of program on your computer do not install them what you have to do is you have to take all your hdrs and you can batch uh create jpegs from them because if you put like a an hdr viewer here then every time i would go into this folder it would just take, it would like take four hours <laughs> to show all of the HDRs in here. But notice how quickly I can go through and the way that I have them sorted, it's like this is this HDR, this JPEG is this HDR. This and if, and I have them at set to a size, they're 1920 by 960. These si the size is here, 1920 by 960. So when I click on this, uh, when I open it, 
I can see it's it's pretty nice quality. It, it, it's it's not this little teeny, but at least it's not an 8K thumbnail, okay? And it's a JPEG. And so that's what is really, really nice is that I can just scroll down through these and they just paint immediately as I go through each one. And I can go down through them and easily pick out. Make sure you don't click the JPEG when you're going to put this either in your sky or in your uh, or on your plane. You want to make sure you pick the HDR or the EXR. And it and Photoshop will batch convert these. You have to do a search on YouTube. It's how to batch. Um, how to batch uh, convert files in Photoshop. And when you do a search uh, on YouTube, you'll find videos explaining how, and it's easy. You just select everything, like select the top thing in the folder, and then it creates this folder with whatever size it tells you set the size that you want of your thumbnails, and it creates the thumbnails for you and they're JPEGs, and they, they load instantly like this. And the thing with a, if these, if this was like a, a thumbnail, like plugin that you added to Windows, then it would take your thumbnails and it would take, when you open this, it would just go one, two, three, and it would start painting the thumbnails every time you open it has to do it again and again it doesn't remember them and it just keeps like very slow it's like each one it takes forever to to paint it and so you want to go down here and you have to wait and then all of a sudden after about a half a minute boom one will play then another one will look. do not install a thumbnail previewer on your computer just and and the thing about it when you buy new hdrs you buy new ones on daz then they're not part of this collection so every so about once a year i will just redo the whole collection i'll go in and take all of the hdrs that i bought the new ones that i bought and i will um reconvert all of these images and to and in order to make a folder this has got five uh, I think 3,000, uh, 3,000, 3,500 3, or maybe even 5,000 or something like that HDRs in here. And to use Photoshop to create all those HDRs and the e EXRs in the entire folder, I think it took maybe about an hour from my computer to make all of these JPEGs. And now I have them all in one folder and if I like this one right here, well, that's this one. You just go by the name. One's a JPEG. One's an a they have the same name, exact name. Don't change the name. Make sure they're the same name, but just with one with HDR and one with JPEG. And I can just pick out of all of these files whichever JPEG or HDR that I want to use in my scene. And it's that simple. It is that simple. So let's try this mountain lake. Now this is going to change the, the, the tone of the scene. Now see, now this is nice. Because the, I, I, I'm feeling this right now. Um, now the background image is, needs some, some tone. Okay, so the, uh, but, um, uh, now, uh, we got something, we got something exciting here. All right, so the dome rotation, let's just take and play around with the dome a little bit. Okay, bring it back this way, maybe. There we go. I think this is nice right here. Uh, maybe a little bit more sun. Give them a little bit more. There we go. Or we could move the sun over to the other side. There we go. Uh, 
there. Or maybe a little bit to the side. Okay, it's going back. This brings it I really liked it when it was kind of back in the back here. And then I could possibly, see it gives me, this kind of thing. And then I can use a spotlight. Nine. And let's look through the spotlight. Bring it up. Bring it back. And let's bring the spotlight down a little bit like this. Okay, and go to the camera. Back to our eye ray. And select this here. Bring this down here. Let's add some lumens to the spotlight. Nine. There we go. See, now we have a little bit of like this interesting stuff going on here. And then we can take our plane here, the surface of our plane. Come on. Okay, I'm going to save this. And I can take this emission color. Now, this one we would go with. Now, the lumens are at 100. I'm going to leave that. I'm just going to take the glossy color. Not the glossy color. Take our base color. Let's just bring it down a tiny bit. So it's not so... And we could change the tint of the base color. So it's not so blue, maybe. There we go. I think that works. Now, uh, I'm wondering if they should have any things like a little backpack or a knapsack <laughs> or something. Um, okay, there's our plane. Um, maybe just some, some grass that comes up or some, some kind of maybe flowers up in here. Files. Some flowers, maybe. These are new. These, uh, props. Okay. See what they look like. Yeah.
Um, uh, thank you, Art, for the the. Uh, that's a great <laughs> great idea. I think you were talking about the HD uh, the HDRs. Yeah. So this this uh, you you absolutely because the thing is is that over time you will buy all kinds of HDR files and you don't move them. Do not move them out of your my dad's 3d library don't move them okay do not just copy them into just do a search for star.hdr which would be your your asterisk dot h asterisk is a wild card it's called a wild card and when it comes to the file explorer so if you put like a star dot jpeg it will that star means any name dot jpeg okay and so that's why you do a search in your dad's 3d library for any name that has dot exr or dot hdr after it okay and then it will do a search and find every .hdr file, and you just take them and copy them, all of those, and you do it at the top level so that it searches the entire My Dad's 3D library. Why is my monitor turning off? Why, why, why did you turn off? Come back, come back, come back. Please, there you are. Yes, the thumbnails. And so you do a search for, okay, what, uh, what's happening? I am having issues with my monitor. Okay, we're going to switch this HDRI to. Okay. HDRI 1. Hmm, I can't switch to that input. You see this? HDRI 1. H okay. Okay. That's HDMI, I mean. Okay, what is going on here? HDMI 1. Okay. Okay, I guess I'm just going to have some real weird things happening here. Until I figure this out, let's go back here. Let's open up our display settings and identify, detect. All right. And what if we just change our Scale. Apply and see what happens. Okay, that came back. I have so many odd things going on. <laughs> All right, it's back. Okay, it's like my charge. Just a moment, I'll be right back. I think I know what's wrong.
Okay. That may have fixed it, I'm not certain, but I think it did. Let's see. If that fixed it, I don't think... Uh, my monitor has a battery in it, inside of it. Okay, I think that fixed it. Okay, so yeah, uh, so the, the asterisk is a wild card. And so anytime you're searching and you want to find all of the JPEGs, like on your whole computer or something, you just put asterisk.jpg, or if you're looking for all of the document files, then you could say like asterisk.txt, and it will find wildcard, which is the asterisk, and then it will find dot anything with that wild card, which asterisk is just anything, means anything. You can do that also, like if you know there's a name in the file, like say if it had the word Rex in it, then I could, in the file name, I could say asterisk Rex asterisk dot whatever. And um, that means anything wild card in front of Rex and wild card after Rex dot whatever, and it will find that file. So anything with the word Rex in the name, but you can put the asterisk in front of the word Rex and asterisk after. That means anything before and after the words Rex, and it will find it. So that's what, uh, so the asterisk is a wild card it, for Windows, for the Windows File Explorer. And so, uh, yeah, put a uh, copy all of your EXR files. Now, the EXR files are a are uh, an Apple. They're like Apple HDRs, and the HDR I believe would be like Windows. Okay, I think I'm going to make that sky a little brighter. Uh, here, the plane. Let's go to the plane. All right, we go to uh, the surfaces. And we go to the plane. And we can just take this here and just bring it up a little more. Just a little brighter, but not too bright. And we can also take... Now, since we have this plane here with everything on it, we can go to the parameters and I can just say X scale and I can kind of mess with this a little bit. Control L, turn the light on and see I can just kind of make the sky the way I want it to be. Now control zero to bring us back into iRay. Save this. Okay, and I think maybe our spotlight could maybe even be a little bit brighter to make these guys pop out a little more. Even though this little fong there is quite bright there, what I could do is... Okay, well, let's just try this uh, with... Put a couple of... And we can take and warm it a tiny bit. There we go. I think that's a little overexposed, so we'll bring it down to one. There we go. So, um, I think this is going to do it. So, for our scene, um, Maybe we come back in here.
And we take the golden rods. Put them over here. All right, let's see what that does. Might make it a little bit more intimate. Eh, I don't know. This kind of just, this one's okay, but the, the yellow one just, it distracts from this one. So we can just take this one and put this in like this goldenrod too. Pull this over here. There we go. Hmm. Camera, spotlight, let's bring this in a little more focused. Then we'll turn it down. Uh, back to our camera. And spotlight parameters. Let's go to five. Maybe what we'll do is take, go to our spotlight here. Let's take and put this spotlight here and then edit, duplicate. And we'll move this spotlight over here like that, maybe. Then we'll go back to our camera view, see what these spotlights look like when they're focused on our subjects instead of the center. Yeah, I think that's a little better. Yeah, that the Spotlight one. Let's take the bear one down though a little bit less. To like two. And the uh, elephant one could come down a little too. They don't need to be. Two. I'll bring the elephant up to four. Okay. There. Let's uh, put a little bit, another light coming in through here. Okay, so create another spotlight. Yeah, fix that. Let's look through the spotlight, bring it up, nine, spotlight, and let's bring this in through here. Gosh, those are pretty, those flowers. Let's bring the spotlight, spotlight three. Okay. OK, 
okay and let's now go to iray select this Yeah, we got a little bit of light there. Let's go to four. Bring the temperature down a little bit. And maybe one more spotlight over in here. Let's bring that down to three. Oh, I think I like that at four. Gives a little bit of intensity, four. And you will make it a little bit more like sunlight. Save this, and then let's lighten this up a little bit. Spotlight. Camera. Spotlight 4. Back to texture shaded mode. Spotlight 4. Camera. High ray. Spotlight 4. Let's give this a nine. And five. And let's make that a little bit softer. Hmm, I think that's too intense. Let's go down to th two. Yeah. Sun is setting and I've got to move my vehicle to inside my gate. Okay, awesome, awesome art. Thank you for the compliment on the scene. Very kindly, thank you, thank you very much. Excellent. Hope to see you soon. We're going to probably start working on the render settings. Be careful out there. Diligent. And we'll see you in a little bit. Thank you, Art. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. So I think maybe the... Uh, the spotlight on the bear. I'm going to pull this spotlight, put it, just move it around a little bit. This is called just spotlight. I think I'm going to take this spotlight like this and just make it a little wider. Like that. Okay, back to the camera. Back to iRay, and we might give it a little bit more. Lumens. Seven. Yeah. 
maybe down to five. Okay. Maybe a spotlight in here on these little flowers. Five. Not sure why it mismatches these spotlights when it brings them in. I might have a folder with a bunch of spotlights in them. I don't see them though here. No. Okay, well, see, it, it, so it's working. It's just putting names that it likes on them. Let's try that. Camera. Hi, Ray. And let's change the lumens on this to eight. Let's go more with a five. And let's soften the light a little bit. Yeah, um, I think that's still a little too bright. So we go back to Spotlight 5, we go to 2. Just something to make them stand out a little bit. There we go. And I think this background sky has got to be brighter. So let's go to our plane. Surface. Take this color down a little bit. Glossy color. Okay, we don't need a we don't need gloss at all. So we put that to black. We don't need the sky, the plain shiny. Okay. Glossy inputs off. And emission color could be a little bit in the blue, just a tiny bit. And let's go give it a little bit more luminance. See what happens. See now that's what's lighting all this up. When you do that, you notice that this is all little teeny dots and everything. That means when you turn up this gigantic plane as a light, <laughs> then what you're doing is you're adding like about, it's going to need about maybe another 2000 iterations to make, to, to reticulate all that detail. But it's sometimes, sometimes it's really worth to it. So that means that this, I should probably let this render to like, I'm going to go to three maybe. I should probably re let this render to like four or 5,000 iterations. Now, what if I take this plane off, this light off of my luminance browse? What 
Okay, cancel. I just want none. Doesn't seem to have done anything there. I picked something weird. Okay, let's go to... Uh, where was that? D, Sol, Sunny D. Emission color. Back to white. I think I like that. Okay, this spotlight here. Where? Where's the spotlight that I brought in from the side? I think it's over here. Perspective, spotlight. That's the one coming in through there. This is the spotlight coming in through here. So let's bring this just a little bit higher for the effect of it all. Let's go to five. Let's see what that does, camera. Well, that might be a little too much for, yeah, okay. All right, I think we've got this, uh, all uh, ready to do a render. Now the spotlight on the elephant. Let's go and look at this a little more closely. Color, let's go with a five. Let's see what happens when we bring. I don't know why that spotlight looks so dark. Spotlight, oh, I might have put There we go. I want the elephant too yellow looking. There. Let's, uh, okay. Um, now the elephant looks a little scared. So let's m mess with the elephant's eyes. Tune elephant. Parameters. Eye, ear size, eyes. Ears raise. Let's just type in eyes. Or eye. I blink. Where's the eyes closed left? Sleepy eyes wide. Okay, you don't we don't have a global eye. Alright, so this would be the right eye. Let's do this in, okay, I, and I left. So he looks more like romantic rather than like horrified. Um, See what? Thank you very much for the likes, 
Very kind of you. That much. That's much better. There. Okay, we got Marlo and and our toon elephant. Yeah. So, uh, okay, now this light that's shining on the elephant. See how it's done, what it's doing with this, his trunk, his thing here. So if I fucking find that spotlight, I'm going to take that out of the scene. And I'm going to find a ghost light. See, a ghost light can be big, but it doesn't, because it's a plane, it doesn't create, it doesn't cast like a shadow because it's like blocking all the light because it's, if you use, if you take your spotlight and you make that the center instead of a point, you make it into a plane. Well, when you make that plane big, yeah, the light's coming in, but it's also blocking the light. The bigger you make it, the more it blocks the light from your HDRI. But if you use a ghost light, the light can penetrate right th from around the scene through the HDRI. So you can get a wide light that doesn't have, uh, that has soft shadows. Okay, so ghost. And we're going to use... This one, this kit, props, and we'll use this little square light here, nine, where is it, okay, we're going to turn it like this, like that, and parameters, get rid of this I word, and that's going to be 90 degrees, about 90 degrees, minus 90, move it up. See, I don't see the same shadow thing because the bear doesn't have like a tusk that's getting in the way. And let's turn this a little bit like this. And let's look at it from the side perspective. From the back. Welcome back, Art. Welcome. I am glad you got that done. A stitch in time saves nine. That's what they say. Very nice to have you back. We are using a ghost light because our spotlight, like I said, if you take that sphere, that point in your spotlight, and you turn it into a disc or you turn it into a square, and then you make it large, well, yes, it puts off a nice light, but it blocks the light from your HDRI behind it because that plane that, be, that you make wide and high is not transparent. That's why we're going to use a ghost light, okay? And this ghost light is from... It's an iRay ghost light kit... Irie, Irie, ghost projector lights. Now, this is something that I haven't bought yet. Uh, the ghost light kit, this is it. It's 65% uh, sale. It comes with all kinds of different ghost lights. You also have this ghost light prop kit. I kind of favor this one, but I, I, I own this one, but I haven't used it much. Now, this ghost light, ghost projection, uh, this looks really, really cool, 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 cool. 
So yeah, this is nice. It's uh, I don't know when this was came out, but this is definitely going to go into my wish list. Not sure when this came out. I wish they would put dates here, you know, like on each product. So the release date, you know, so you can say, oh, this came out. Skins for Genesis 2 males. Well, we know when that came out. So, but yeah, I just wish they would put this. The fact that it says new. Now, I don't, maybe they put this in. Uh, how did I miss this? Because it's in the new set, new stuff. And uh, how did I miss it? All right, it's it's showing all the things that I haven't purchased here. So how new is it? You know, I I come here, I I <laughs> I get up at three o'clock in the morning to to see what's new in the Daz store because in the Eastern Eastern time they that they put it out at three o'clock in the morning. And between two and three, it pops up on the site. Welcome, Art. Welcome, welcome. Welcome back. Welcome back. Yes, we got casual wear. How did I miss this ghost light thing? It's, it can only be go back here so far and they're going to run out of new stuff. So when when did this come out? It's still in the new. I can't spend 20 bucks on this. And I used up my thing to buy a uh, Snuggly Bear. So how did I miss this? Uh, you get to see the things that I haven't bought. I would really like to have this uh, this romantic set. I just, it was like, my gosh, the stuff I bought back then. Wand Wars poses. Okay, that's poses. Poses. See, these are all still new. Weapons. Okay. Uh, it would tell me by looking at the the SKU number, like that you can kind of tell the date of things by looking at the SKU number. So, but, all right. This is something that I have to have. Uh, but I'm not going to, I can't spend 20 bucks on it. I have to wait. Now look at the ghost lights that come with it. Wow. Oh, look, you get windows. This is nice. You can just put like that whole, these are like gobos. They're just, it's just uh, these, but they look really cool. These look really nice. And then you can add that. That's what they are. But they're ghost lights. This is so nice. And trees. Oh my gosh! You can put. Uh, it just covers everything with a tree. Tree branches. Wow! And you're seen. This is nice, nice, nice. Now, if I'd seen this, and if this, if this, if this, if I saw this on a 30% sale and it was like 15 bucks, I would have probably bought this. If I, I just didn't see it, look how cool this is. Look at that. Focus. Oh, you can change the focus too. Um, okay, and that, that is nice too. It's like a blur. Wow. This is nice. Look at that. 10% focus. This is a really nice set. I pretty much buy anything that comes out like this. Yeah, any kind of 
ghost light stuff I buy. And this is, you get, you get also a bunch of colors, but of course you can change them. And they're emission colors. So, yeah. Some codes. Try some of these codes. Okay. Add to my cart. Let's go in there. I don't, I think I have a couple. Wish love or madness bag. Okay. Wish love. Oh, I have. No, but I don't know if that will work. This is new. Okay. Wish dash love. I think that one is kind of old. Let's see. All right. That one didn't work. That's okay if they don't work. It's worth trying. Now, madness is for madness products, but let's try this. Madness slash dash bag. It might be part of the mag madness thing, though. And fun finds. Ooh. Dash. Fun finds. Ooh. So, okay, those didn't work. Now, um, earn. So I didn't earn any. That last one I bought the elephant, I lost my uh, three tokens. And I didn't get enough to make a new token. Spend 1.01 1 .01 and I'll get a token. So uh, there's a possibility it might work with my... Uh, with my account, but I'm not going to look in there. I'll, it's in my, it's in my wish list. Oh, 40 for me. Let's try that one. Go back. Uh, 40. Oh, 40 dash F O R dash M E 40 for me, please. No, I, if there's a, if the, that was a one-time coupon, they're probably mad because I'm using these coupons and I've already used them. <laughs> and they're like once per customer. <laughs> I just don't remember if I've used them. But uh, <laughs> add to card again. Let's go up here. Open. Add to cart. Okay. Let's see. View for checkout. Okay, we'll try the 40. I did try the other ones. 40 for me. F-O-R-T-Y dash F-O-R dash M-E. No, not valid. So I'm going to add that to, uh, I'm going to, I'm just going to wait. Yes, it is worth a try. Um, <laughs> no. Well, I would love it if they'd pay me something for uh for sharing their products with all you out here, but uh um you know what it makes me less biased and I get to say what I want about their products and I'm not so I'm pretty pretty honest about it. So when I tell you to buy uh to buy these ghost lights I mean it. It's from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> it's not because uh, they pay me. <laughs> so these ghost lights, uh, yeah, I don't do not buy them now. <laughs> buy them when they are on sale. And I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't pay more than $15 for them. Okay. But $15, they're worth $15 in my opinion. Okay. Uh, the, if, if you have money and you don't mind spending it in the Daz store, they're worth 20 bucks. But with me, I have to wait until they're on sale. Well, that's, um, th at least for now, <laughs> if Daz ever started to pay me, then I would tell you, I would come out and say, well, Daz actually paid me to say this. <laughs> so... <laughs> So I would tell you, okay, I think by law you're supposed to tell people or at least 
you know, to say this is a paid advertisement or it's like they gave me this product for free and but I'm still allowed to get, make my own opinion. They don't see what I write before I before I show it. Those kinds of things. Disclaimers. But there's no disclaimers today. So, all right. So we're using this uh, iRay Ghost Lights Kit 1. And I think that is on sale by that. Ghost Lights Kit. And uh, this right here is is on sale. Okay, I'll let, I think I'm... Okay, we got to look through the shop. Search the store. Yeah, this is on a 65% sale. I probably paid 10 for it. Uh, so this is worth it. These This comes with a lot of lights and the the, the uh my gosh the um the the it just comes with one picture this is terrible but this comes with a whole bunch look if you get a disc light a dish light dome light half cylinder sphere square wall light a ceiling light box light they're all ghost lights Remember, since you go on Daz Daily, sort by price, low to high. Everything before the gift card is usually on free. Sometimes you see one jump, the gift card. I used to do that, Art. I used to sort from low to high, but I have I own all the low price kind of stuff right now. I pretty much have bought everything old that I want. Like, so... I mean, I have all 10,600 uh, items that I've bought from the Daz store. So right now, and and I buy mostly mail items, okay? So every once in a while, I'll see a dress and say, yeah, if I use a female, I would probably want to put her in that dress. Or I'll see hair and say, that would really look good. If I'm going to use a female in my scenes, I'm going to use, I would probably like to use that hair with her. And so every once in a while, I'll buy female stuff. Like, you know, when it comes to like breast augmenting and all of this stuff and, you know, and uh, all kinds of different faces for females. I just, I don't buy a lot of female stuff. And so it's like half of their library, I don't buy so you can just say for the for the most part but then you know it's like of course i bought victoria 9 and of course i bought the pro bundle for victoria 9 uh, there's a bunch of female stuff that i do buy but for the most part so that means out of ten thousand stuff i've bought like every male everything that you can yeah it is kind of funny so i've bought like that's there are there are people who buy mostly female stuff and they don't buy any male stuff so and that's no no more kind of funny than what i do okay it's really not um so it's just that's what i like okay and so so the um, so that means that ten thousand they have ten thousand male items, which means I've pretty much bought everything, oh you know even down to all of the Michael's clothes and Michael hair and every kind of hair made for Michael four. I mean every kind of everything all the way back everything. So when I set the price down low to high, there's usually not much. And I think you can do that in your wish list shop. Let's see. I don't know if you can do that in your wish list. Uh, set it low to high. Uh, items, new arrivals. Yeah, you can. Low to high. And you go in here and like this Michael 5 Pro Suite. These, a lot of these things, I'm just not going to. The Sp Spooky Hollow Bundle, I own a bunch of stuff in that. The Michael Four Hero Pro Pack, I own the big pack, so I don't need the Pro Pack because I own the like the the two hundred dollar one. So yeah, uh, so as you can see, Filter Forge, I bought the Filter Forge from Filter Forge. 
And I paid, I think, close to $500 for Filter Forge. But I own Filter Forge with the lifetime updates and the with the filter. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's just that when I see these bundles and everything, they say, oh, bundles, all these bundles, and they're all on sale and everything. And it's like I own everything in the bundle except maybe one thing that I just don't really care about owning. And so, uh, as you can see, uh, this Seamster, I'm going to have to wait until that goes down to about $15. I'd like to own that, but I'm going to have to wait until that goes down. Uh, the Crazy Chef bundle, I already own all the stuff in it. So, again, uh, this uh, Studio Scripting, this is high to low, actually. I think that's what I picked was high to low. Yeah, high to low. These are the things. It's like all this stuff that's high priced and everything. Headshot Pro. I already own the headshot, the new one, the twenty, uh, the other one, the Daz Daz Headshot one, and I'm just not gonna buy this other one right now. Uh, I think I kind of prefer the Daz one. An Easter egg event going on last year. They were all actually freebies. Yeah, um, I have to look into that. I, di I didn't really read today's specials that, that deeply. So, uh, yeah, so we go down high to low. That's a good tape. This Terra Escape, it's not on sale. Sanctuary. Um, you, you can see that even these... Uh, for Genesis, you know, it's just like what's left here are just even the high to low stuff. <laughs> Hidden treasure. And I don't even know if this is uh, I-Ray. Um, so uh, is that I-Ray? Yeah, it is I-Ray. It's just not on sale right now. I'd like to own this, but I have to wait until that goes down to about seven bucks. I kind of know what I'm willing to pay for things. So, um, yeah, I do kind of know uh, that what I would be willing to pay for things. Let's get this light on on our uh, elephant here. I think I'm going to move it a tiny bit closer so it's a little more intense. And because it's a, it's a, a, a plane instead of a point, we won't have as much hard shadows Okay, let's go back now to our camera view. And we have to go to iRay to make that thing disappear. And you change the light intensity and in surfaces on this one. Yeah, well, that's pretty bright. That just kind of totally did everything. So we go to surfaces here, and we can turn down lumens let's go down to one uh let's go this up to nine yeah so let's go to two nine let's bring it down a little bit one one, zero. Yeah, that got rid of our shadows, and he's lit up now. And Spotlight 5 is pointing here. I think I'm going to turn that one up and make that. I think I want to take that, the temperature down a little bit more on that. Yeah, so it's a little bit red in here. This uh, warm kind of in the, on the... All right. So save this, and we're going to we're gonna set up... Let's put a little bit of uh, a VDB in here, a little bit of atmosphere. It looks too, it looks too clear. There's no air. So we'll put uh, a little bit of uh, atmosphere... In here, VDB, up here, 
And I'm going to go with my favorite VDB props, this one. And we'll take this and we'll bring our, let's first bring our density way down and see what happens when we bring it down to almost nothing. Surfaces. Where's the, that would be, oh, okay, I got one more to go, one more level. Now we got it here. Let's put it to point one. Yeah, it's a little bit. Let's make the, the uh, atmosphere kind of yellow. Yeah, orange. And let's bring it up again to, let's go to two. No. Let's go to point one. I think that's enough. Uh, let's bring it back up to 10 and move it around a little bit. Let's move it like over maybe. And I think there's a, a spindle that's right in front of them all. Yeah. Here we go. Now it's working kind of. And once you get it like kind of where you want it, then then you can bring it down more intelligently. So go point five. No, not point five, five. Uh, let's go to one. Yeah, I think that works. One, let maybe two. Uh, I've found with these that they're in iRay. They're a little stronger than what they end up being like in the final render. So uh, just maybe I'm wrong about that. But um, sometimes you want to err a little bit uh, on with a heavier hand. Okay, so I wish you could cut parts of these VDBs out with like geometry editor and just draw a square and cut that section out. So uh, someday. All right, I think this works now. Uh, Now I can do like after filters and stuff. So, but I'm I'm kind of liking this now. So maybe we'll go to one. And I'm probably going to regret that, you know, bringing it down to one because I just told you that they're that they in the final render they're a little weaker than you probably won't. But there's it's it doesn't look like if I were to just turn this off, it would notice the difference that there's no atmosphere and you, you've just almost every scene you've got to have a vdb in it you've got to you've got to make the air you've got to put air it's like in the scene or it's just not going to look right it's uh pretty much now the elephant skin i think i'm going to make him a little bit darker uh, just a tiny bit, Le uh, the tune elephant. Maybe we'll try it, tune elephant, and we go to surfaces, nails. Oh wow, this is different. Okay, where's the trunk, trunk tip, teeth, hair, nostrils, eyelids, eyelashes? Uh, where's the uh, skin? Eye center, eyebrows, tusk, trunk tip, teeth, hair, skin. All right, would you take the base color here and just drop it down a little bit? 
Okay. That's a little too much. I'd almost like the polar bear to be white, but I mean the bear to be white, but there, that's a little better. Maybe up just a little bit more. There. Okay. I think that works. Now, I, I wish I could give him a little bit more character to his skin, like, um, I don't think that would work. The, uh, the skin, uh, where you can give moles and kind of like skin uh, stuff to your Genesis 9 figures. It wouldn't work on this. These Toon L of Toon creatures aren't built on Genesis, on any Genesis figure. They're kind of separate figures. All right, so let's set up our render settings. I think I'm going to render this at 6,000. Okay, that's good. Wow, they're all set up on... How did it rem Oh, it does usually remember this. Just doesn't remember the these here, the progressive. So maximum samples, maximum time, and turn off the render quality enable so it'll keep rendering and rendering and rendering until I shut it off. And I think that's it. We got the teapot, the tea set here. They're going to have a lovely afternoon having some tea. Yeah. All right. So we, it's been saved. Let's hit render. See what it looks like. <laughs> okay. How quickly I have both of my 3090s back in my main computer. This is why I render things very large, because this would be the time when I look at these trees and say, oh my gosh, they need sub D. And, you know, because the branches are all kind of, but these look pretty nice. I'm not going to touch these. These look beautiful, actually. Now, all these little fireflies, those will go away, but those are from, that's from my sky. Okay. That's what I told you that the sky is going to create all of this, and that's why I have to render it for another couple thousand, because these little light particles, they're coming from the sky, from because that plane is an, emiss it's an emissive. That's what turns the plane into an HDR. So I don't think it's 16-bit or, or 10-bit, like some of the... I think the HDRs are 10-bit, but... But it's okay. Uh, it's still uh, an HDR. It's still an emissive. And you see now, because notice how sharp all of this is. And then notice how the sky is kind of a little bit. Just imagine how low the quality would be if I hadn't used a, uh, a this plane. This This sky would be just like digitized right out. See, so that's why I always use a plain backdrop on my, almost always use a plain. See, and for, to me, this looks like, a, this looks like a natural kind of depth of field thing where the sky is farther away. So it's going to look a little bit. So that's not a bad, bad thing. But when it looks completely digitized, like look at the Look at the sharpness in all of this compared to that. And this is a fairly large, at least maybe 8K image. And if I had stretched that all the way around the sky, it, would, it wouldn't even be HD. So that's why I always put a plane in because I've I've made scenes and worked really hard to get the scene to look right and and just to have the entire scene look at the detail in the in the in the elephant's skin. So there is more detail than kind of what 
I thought was there. So just a lot of detail. And when I come up here, the sky doesn't look like a big eyesore. It doesn't look like just this completely blown out image. It looks like it kind of fits there, okay? So it's not bad. So, and these trees look, they don't need sub D. They're all fine. The grass doesn't need sub D. It's all, it's probably already has it. And this is what, another reason why I do this. It looks like these are growing up through the cracks. It doesn't look like they are growing up out of a rock. At least th these ones don't. Let's see about these. These ones kind of do, but they're okay. It's only a few. And now how about our crocuses in the front? Oh, those look pretty. Those will reticulate nice also. Very nice. And their feet don't look like they're going through the floor. Let's see his other foot. You can see a little bit of his other foot, but yeah, this is all, this is ready. It's ready to, for the long haul render. Now all of this after it, now we're probably only up to a couple hundred, 400. So all of these little, this will all reticulate and it's gonna turn into some nice reflections on these leaves. It doesn't look like it now, but it will. All these little dots will, they're gonna reticulate, not perfectly, because like I said, this is a gigantic light source. And so uh, you're gonna get these kind of little specular dots, but you have to let it reticulate, you have to let it render to like 6,000 iterations. That's why I turn the, uh, all. that's why I set the render settings to where I do. So it'll just keep rendering and rendering. Around 6,000, these will be fine. So, okay, that's going to do it for me today. Is It was our first really awesome, awesome, awesome experiment today, giving you guys and gals 4K. So we, you, so when you come and watch my videos, now you can see Daz and you can see all these little parts of Daz and all the little things that I click on. It's going to be nice and sharp for you. I'm going to look at this video after the fact and make sure that everything looks good. But I think we have uh, something to take us into the future, okay? Awesome art. Thank you for the compliment on the show. I'm always looking to bring in stuff that is going to enhance your experience. Anything, if you, if there are any products that you would like me to do some work on, um, learning how to do, Sometimes I'll do a product and it's like, I've never even tried to use it, okay? It, you know, just you know, just because I do a tutorial on the product, that doesn't mean that I've ever used it before. It's just that it's like I'm sharing my experience of never using something before and how I figure it out. And usually I find that's not a good idea because sometimes I can get... <laughs> Thank you very much for the compliment on the music. So sometimes I do. It's better if I do try to use something before I do a show, because if I can't figure it out, sometimes it makes me frustrated and I get mad and I get, you know, really frustrated with a product and then I start saying this product is terrible. And then I find out, well, if I used it right, it would have worked so so if you have any products you'd like to see showcased you'd like to see me use them before you go out and buy them okay that's that's where um then write them down in the comments okay and say 
Do you own this particular product? Would you showcase this product? And I'll build a whole scene around it and around using that product. It doesn't matter if it's a really difficult product to use because even the most difficult products that Daz sells, I'm up to up up. I am game for learning to use them. And uh, now that seamstress program, that's very daunting to me, but <laughs> when it goes on sale, I will be buying the seamstress program. That is a way to, <coughs> to uh, re uh, set up your bones. Angus, have a good night. It is polka, polka, polka time, my friend. So we are going to polka our way out of this video. So thanks again for watching. I will see you again. And we shall work on, uh, on some new stuff, new things. Today was these <coughs> little tune tune critters okay and getting them to work uh i think they're cute and awesome and marlo and marlo and the elephant is uh i haven't figured out maybe he's going ganesh or something so uh we've got marlo with his guru elephant and so yeah it's an awesome day yeah um yeah i've got it in my wish list too yes art i do and it's a daunting program. It seems to be marketed towards people who make um, their own. But you know what? Many times I brought in an OBJ file, and I wanted to turn that OBJ file into, uh, into a figure. And that's what Seamstress really does. I think that's the biggest part of Seamster. Plus, it also puts on weight maps. So it's... That is definitely a candidate for this for this channel. Okay, so you can just as when once Seamster and if you see that Seamster goes on sale, let me know. Throw me a, a comment and say, "Hey, Rex, Seamster's on sale. It's on a forty percent off, you know, or something sale." And um, once it goes down to like I said, about fifteen bucks, I'll probably buy it. <coughs> Excuse me. And I will probably, um, I'll probably buy Seamster, and then I'll use a bunch of, um, uh, of tokens, you know, and bring it down even further. So, but that's definitely on my list of things to buy. So up, we're up to a thousand iterations with this. So, thank you very much, and I will see you in the next tutorial. I hope you have enjoyed this crystal clear presentation yes very good art please do please email me or a useful coupon you can email me or you can just put it in the chat when you put it when you put your comments on the videos other people can see them they can use the uh, coupons also <coughs> and also it helps my it helps my, the algorithm that there's some kind of activity. The, your likes help the algorithm, and so do your comments. So, all right. Take care, Daz people. Thank you for hanging out with me and watching this tutorial. And I will be back again soon with more awesome Daz stuff. And we have uh, these guys are going to have some tea. So I will talk with you later. <laughs> all right. I'll be back. This is Easy 3D TV signing off, and we got polka time. Polka, polka, polka time. I will see you again soon, 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 soon. All righty. Bye-bye.